Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church in Tomahawk, Wisconsin today. I'm Pastor Gerald Check, Pastor Emeritus, which simply means that I've retired in ministry, and I'm a member of this congregation. So we're worshiping today during this Pentecost season, aren't we? This is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, which is to say that the first half of our church year was about the ministry of Jesus itself. But now, during the Pentecost season, we turn toward ourselves as we respond to that ministry that he has shared with us and how we react to it. And so, the Pentecost season of our church year. Our gathering hymn for today is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. begin with our confession and our absolution. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from our loving, your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Let us pray. 
O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21. Today's reading is about Jacob's death and the brothers of Joseph who begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said, but God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless, Bless the, the Lord, Lord o, o my soul, and, and forget, forget not, not all God's, God's benefits. benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who, Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? O oh Lord, Lord, you, you provide, provide vindication and justice for all, all who are oppressed. oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you, you are, are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You, you have, have not dealt, dealt with us according, according to our, our sins, nor repaid us according to our inequities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As, as far as, as the east is from the west, so far have, have you removed our transgressions from us. us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. The second reading today is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. The lesson is about the Christian community who has significant struggles with diversity. Here Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ who died for all of us and will judge each of us. Here is the lesson. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything while the weak eat only vegetables. 
Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fail, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. To hear our gospel acclamation, Alleluia, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ the righteous. Your sins are forgiven on account of his name, Alleluia. Our holy gospel for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost is written in the 18th chapter of St. Matthew, beginning with the 21st verse. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to Peter, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to, wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. And then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. And then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, 
his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. And so my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you, our shepherd, and our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. I find that this coronavirus pandemic has really got me to do a lot of inner thinking. Lots of inner perspective. And I suspect that's happening to every one of us. Yes, every one of us. And when I watch the news each day and see and hear ambulances racing down the road to local hospitals, I think of the one on the bed inside. I think, I imagine that it might be me. And then I think of maybe it would be the last time that person would see the one that he or she loved and, and hear the voice and the words of the one who loved in return. I have thought of grandkids who might never get to say goodbye. I have thought of the pastor of that person, a pastor of faith, but one who isn't even going to be able to come with words of comfort and hope because the hospital is closed to everyone but the hero health workers trying so desperately to save lives. I also admit I've been thinking of my God and the faith that I call my own. I find myself I'm journeying through the years of my life and I see some unusual and even disturbing, disturbing scenes that make me wonder over and over again if I haven't failed, if I haven't messed up so much so that the kingdom of heaven that I literally want to leap into someday is not really on my charts. Maybe I haven't done what really counts. As I remember it, it was the second Monday in the middle of June in the year 1963. I say the second Monday because I will never, ever forget it. Eight days ago, on a Sunday, I had been installed in in Canada, in the Cabri Saskatchewan Lutheran Parish with three congregations out there in the middle of the wheat fields and the grazing pastures. It was the second Monday of my ministry. Yesterday, that means, I preached my very first sermon to this group of Norwegian Lutheran congregations. It's Monday morning as Joan and I were having breakfast in our parsonage. There was a tiny wrap on the, on the back door of our kitchen. And through the kitchen window, I saw the face of a short gray-haired lady who I had seen in my bottom church, as I called it, the third church of my parish, some 28 miles south of Cabri, in a community called Hazlet. I saw her in church yesterday. Remember, it's the second Monday of ministry. Her mission became immediately clear. Her concern about blew Joan and, and me away. The words came out very clear and precise and echoed around our kitchen walls without hesitation. 
Pastor, are you really a Christian? Because I don't think so. Bottom line was this. To this elderly lady, I was not really a Christian because I didn't have a radio ministry where all the authentic pastors heralded the good news. It was very clear that I had failed the test for her. And I admit, I have never heralded a radio ministry unless this live streaming counts 20 years after I retired. As I remember it, it was only two or three months later, Joan and I were invited over for dinner at the home of one of my parishioners in Rosary, Saskatchewan, which I'm sure isn't even on the map today because then it was only one elevator and, and three houses. Well, this dinner invitation was to a farm home of an elderly couple just out of town. There was excitement on the front steps as we approached. The lady of the house almost grabbed us and dragged us into her house with her husband tagging, tagging along behind, smiling. She was definitely on a mission. And she took us by hand immediately into the front room, passing the kitchen. And right up to the TV, one of those old, great, big, floor models of the 1960s. And there on the TV was her tattered Bible. Very impressive. And, and here it comes, and there on that TV was a little white handkerchief. There was no doubt about it, and Joan's eyes and my eyes, that handkerchief was the focus for sure. She was thrilled as she said that when she sent that handkerchief to a TV pastor in, in the United States, that that pastor blessed that handkerchief and sent it back to her ready to be the healing ministry of her life forever. You see, I failed in my ministry because no one has ever sent me a handkerchief to bless and to send back for the, the top of their TV. Not sure, you see, even now, that I'm going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. I guess I haven't really done what really, really counts. As I remember it, I had lots of helpful and delightful conversations with an elderly neighbor pastor when I came back to the States for, to southern Wisconsin from northern Saskatchewan. This pastor was a, a true mentor in my life. He was full of wisdom and ideas and helpful hints for me and my ministry. And in one of our conversations, that pastor friend told me how lucky we pastors were because when the kingdom of heaven comes, we pastors would be on the top floor, floor number seven, believe it or not, in the kingdom of heaven. And all the rest of you would be on floors basement through six. I couldn't believe my ears. The conversation still stings really in my heart. And when I asked where in the world he got that idea, he said, oh, it's in one of my confession books that we studied at the seminary. You see, I want the basement in the kingdom of heaven to be with, I hope, a lot of you folks. You see, I don't want to be stuck on the seventh floor with only pastors. 
I want to be able to walk out into the heaven world and hear the birds sing and see the trees wave in the wind and smell the swamp air and hear the frogs. And every Thursday, I want to go downhill skiing. See, according to my pastor friend, this isn't going to happen for me. But it's the seventh floor for me. Obvious again. If I want to be in the basement of the kingdom, I've obviously failed. Because I'm a pastor. Destined for the seventh floor. It looks like I'm not into what really counts. This I don't remember because I had just been born and my mom had to tell me of it later. Mom was rooted in the Moravian church from the country of Moravia, which no longer really exists. My dad was rooted in the Roman Catholic Church of Bohemia. And again, Bohemia is a state that no longer exists. Mom tells me that on one Saturday in the Catholic Church, just two blocks south of the Capitol Square in Madison, I was baptized, along with 10 other squiggling newborns. That means there were 11 of us. Mom and my Catholic sponsors sat in the pew watching as ten moms and their newborns were up front getting baptized along with me, but me held in the arms of my dad because dad was Catholic and mom was not. The priest said it had to be that way. Mom couldn't come up front and hold me like all the other ten moms. Mom wasn't a Roman Catholic. Mom wasn't willing to promise the priest that she would send me to Catholic school. Again, it's clear to me that I was on the road to failing. And the kingdom of heaven that I really, really wanted to be heading for seemingly wasn't on my chart. I seemingly haven't been into what really, really counts. But, but I'm thrilled with today's gospel where Peter and Jesus really have it out on this very particular matter. As wrong as my life must have been, what really counts is what you and I are hearing this morning in this gospel. It's thrilling. Because nowhere else that I can think of in the scripture do we find Jesus saying that we can count on our God coming through with so, so much compassion as he does in this parable. Peter was excited about upping forgiveness from the, the three-stage forgiveness that the Bible has already talked about before this event happens. Remember it? Pastor Christian spoke of it even last week. First, go to a friend and forgive him. And if that doesn't work, go with two or three more and forgive him. And if they still don't accept what is virtually needed, forgiveness that is, bring them, bring the issue right up in front of the whole church and assure them there that forgiveness is theirs. And if they still don't buy it, Jesus says, give up on them. You see, that's what the scripture talked about, sin and forgiveness. The, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus reminded Peter of that. Forgiveness, something 
without which no one will ever step into the basement or the first floor of the kingdom of heaven. Well, Peter thought forgiving up to seven times really is what we ought to be all about. Folks need a chance. Folks need to be hauled away in ambulances with no further words necessary from loved ones at home beyond forgiven. From grandkids at home, forgiven. From pastors from the home church, forgiven. Folks need forgiveness. Folks need a chance at least seven times, Peter suggested, forgiven. But Jesus has other ideas, doesn't he? Jesus says the Father is open to 77 times. Wow! It's more than anyone can hope for. I think it's very clear to all of us failing folks that unless and until we can be assured of forgiveness, we haven't got a prayer in the world of moving out of ventilators into the kingdom of heaven someday. Forgiveness That's it. Forgiveness is what really counts. You see, I feel warm all over today because I know it and I can tell it to you that my sins are gone. That your sins are gone. Because the God we're talking about, the God that we are lifting high in our life is the God who anxiously wants all of us out of this present life situation, our God has got us covered with his forgiveness. You and I come to worship to be assured of it, week after week, day after day, that forgiveness is what really, really counts. And you and I got it. If we want it, (laughs) If we fall to our knees for it, if we eat of the bread and drink of the wine for it, if we turn to our neighbors and say, yes, you're forgiven too, if we want it. See, we can talk about a a lot of other things, good things, meaningful things, excellent suggestions for living in the scriptures. But if we don't, if we don't talk about forgiveness, we don't really have much to say. See, failing is going to continue. I guarantee it. But I hope you also hear that the God that we believe in stands everywhere with forgiveness in his hands. The real ticket, the really only ticket needed for eternity. And so I've got to say to you that in spite of the fact that I don't have a radio ministry proving my authenticity, and that in spite of the fact that I don't bless handkerchiefs, and in spite of the fact that that I don't want to live in heaven on the seventh floor only with the pastors, and that in spite of the fact that my mom was rooted in the wrong Christian church, I've got to tell you, if forgiveness is at the center of your life, both from God to you and you to your friends, you're on the right journey, and so am I. You can count on the end to be what you hope and dream it to be. God is going to take care of you because he's got 77 times of his love just waiting for you, just waiting for you. Amen. Please receive God's apostolic blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
Guard and keep your hearts and minds in our Lord Jesus. Amen. Before we sing our pulpit hymn, I'd like to share some thoughts with our children. Oh, am I ever glad to see you guys again. It's just as exciting for me to know that you've been taking care of yourselves. You've been wearing your masks out in the world. What a joy to see you here. And Henrietta, thanks again for bringing my friend Patches. I think he's kind of neat. Well, it's kind of interesting. I, I've got something kind of hard to talk to you about today. So I hope you don't get mad at me. Do you ever get mad at somebody? Of course you do. Are there times when somebody does something to you and you really get mad? Maybe even you punch them in the nose or maybe you just walk out or maybe Patches does something and you don't like it. Sometimes after a little while you don't even remember who did what, who started it, who ended it. Who ended it? That's the trick question, isn't it? Well, I've got something in my good bag that I know I, I want to give you to remember this event by today. Who ends it? How does it end? I'm going to give you each a key. I'm even going to give Patches one a key that you can put in your pockets and just kind of jingle it every now and again. And remember that when you have trouble with some of your friends, it's important that you step forward and say, you're forgiven. Or even ask them, am I forgiven for what I've done to you? I hope this little key will remind you of what you got to do to say to each other, you're forgiven. Let's pray. Gracious God, life isn't always easy. We get mad at one another. We do dumb things. We sometimes yell at people, or even punch them in the nose. But, oh God, help us remember that what we need to do is to forgive them and they to forgive us. Help us as we walk in life in this Pentecost season, remembering this one exciting truth. And in your Son's name we pray. Amen. I invite you now as we sing our pulpit hymn. Thank you. 
At this time, I invite you to share with me the words of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the passion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools and confirmation classes and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and, and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heaven show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation, where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction. We look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is, is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who are hungry. And guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the, the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join your hearts and your mouths in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom of, and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time in our worship, we would be receiving our offering. And we thank you for gifts that you sent to us in the mail and who 
drop by our church office with them. Your gifts are greatly appreciated and we thank you for them. Let us pray the offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive God's blessing. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. We turn to our sending hymn, O Savior, Precious Savior. Go in peace, remember the poor, thanks be to God.